Hello, Kryptonauts, and welcome back to another episode of Cryptocurrency Chat. I am your host, Blockchain John, here with my co-host, Jake Jabarelli, for episode 517. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Today is Sunday, May 21st, 2023. Uh, just a real uh, a recap with Jake and I. Uh, we went over to the uh, to the Blockchain Expo the, uh, early this week, this past week, and uh, it was it was okay. Uh, what would you rate it from a one to ten, Jake? Uh, Blockchain Expo or the whole event? <laughs> the Blockchain Expo. Uh, three. Three. There you go. In a synopsis, that was the Blockchain Expo. Yeah. Blockchain Expo by itself is pretty crappy. Um, the whole event, pretty good. I'd say an eight, eight, eight and a half. <clears throat> yeah. So. All right. So let's head on over to our first. Uh, what, 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 what are we going to call this? Our first promotion? Our first, right. Well, we, we were promoting Blockchain Expo before it happened, and maybe that was misplaced, but uh, now we're promoting Pacific Bitcoin, Pacific Yay! Bitcoin Festival. Which is going to be happening literally the same time that uh, the 2022 version of uh, Blockchain Ep Ep Expo happened. <laughs> yeah, that was a very loud yay. Thank you. Um, in any case, yeah. So, uh, what can we say about Bitcoin? The Pacific Bitcoin is kind of the uh, left coast version of the Miami Bitcoin conference. Exactly. Pretty much in a synopsis, that's what it is. You know, they got some good speakers there. Yeah, uh, it, it is a new, it's a newer, it's a newer uh, uh, festival uh, that they're putting together in comparison to uh, to the Bitcoin uh, Bitcoin Expo, Bitcoin Festival. Uh, uh, you know, Bitcoin Miami. That's this is new. This is only like the second year that they, they've done this. Last year was a success. This is this this time they're doing it again, and of course they're going to grow it, bring bring in more speakers. So. If you're on the West Coast, you're on the Pacific side, you're uh, over in Los Angeles, you should definitely check it out. Yeah, they have a lot more market. stuff going on than Bitcoin Expo does because this one's paid. Yeah. Bitcoin Expo Whoa. is technically free. Blockchain. Blockchain. Oh, sorry, blockchain. So the, sorry. Blockchain. Yeah, the thing about Blockchain Expo is that it's all crypto. With Pacific Bitcoin, it is literally 100% Bitcoin. Yep. Well, and, and things related to Bitcoin, so... As you can see here, I've scrolled down to the perks of the Bitcoin of Pacific Bitcoin Conference. Sorry, festival. I keep saying the wrong thing. Dive in. Learn from over 100 leading speakers, authors, experts spanning the world of Bitcoin sports entertainment on the main stage. Dive deeper. Pop into Swan Dome. Uh, that's because Swan is the major sponsor here. Uh, dive deep into Bitcoin and its growing ecosystem. Play fresh air and sunshine inspiring art. Bitcoin Classic, basketball tournaments, games, much more. Connect with your favorite people. Refresh and, re and refuel with their hottest food trucks. And enjoy the music, meet-up dinners at the coast, and rip-roaring parties hosted by your favorite Bitcoiners. I'm just looking forward to talking to Michael Saylor. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, lots of stuff going on. This, this is a very big thing. Uh, lots of, uh, I mean, if we just take the basic idea of this that 1300 people attended last year and it, it, assuming the cost let's say was you know a thousand a person then they they made you know at least they brought in uh over a million just to pay for it so so lots of sponsors lots of people lots of involvement i wouldn't be surprised if it was totally a five million dollar event so you can even volunteer if you want <laughs> we hope we can go to the show and we expect that we will so we're engaging as our primary sponsor here anyways uh let's get on to the news this week in bitcoin right this way this week in crypto twitter my bad let me bring it up so everyone can see it a little better the sec dragnet drags on the regulator regulators Recent response to Coinbase indicates that it is likely to continue changing its mind along the way. Crypto prices flatlined this week as battle between U.S. regulators and the blockchain industry dragged on with no substantive developments. Securities and Exchange Commission Chairman Uncle Gary Gensler once more insisted that his agency is ready to help crypto companies register, even though none have been able to so far. 
Both Gensler and the SEC's lawyers continue advancing the agency's position that existing securities laws from form clear enough guidelines for the industry. But opponents, including SEC Commissioner Hester Price, ironically still in the SEC, argue that those rules aren't clear at all. And I think this is what everyone wants to say. On Monday, the SEC responded to Coinbase's petition for a writ of man mandamus, mandamus, mandamus. I hope I pronounced that right. I've never seen that word before. An <laughs> order that would require the regulator, the regulator, to clarify its rules on crypto regulations. Coinbase's chief legal officer, Paul Gruel, wrote up his thoughts on the SEC's response in a thread on Tuesday, and I will only read the second point here. Overall, the SEC's response enforces Coinbase's long-standing concern that our industry does not have clarity on what the SEC may consider to be within or outside its jurisdiction at any time, and is likely to continue changing its mind along the way. Thank you. Thank you for pointing that out, Paul. You're spot on. Last week, the SEC relieved blockchain file sharing platform library, LBRY, of a $44 million debt leaving it only 111614 left to pay. The library took to Twitter to say that while the debt relief was welcome, the industry should not think for a moment that the SEC is going soft. Here's the library's secondary comment. The SEC is going, the SEC decision to no longer seek disgorgement against library should be read as pure self-interest. The SEC thought they would lose and wanted to avoid a bad precedent. We have no, we've seen no sign that the SEC is softening its hostility toward blockchain generally. Meanwhile, outside the SEC drama, Hollywood's Justine Bateman on Monday warned her colleagues from the Screen Actors Guild about how she thinks their jobs will be affected by AI technology, which I still argue has nothing to do with crypto. Justine, in her second comment here on Twitter, Addendum. Actors, you must have ironclad protection against the, u the AI use of your image and voice in the SAG MBA, or your profession is finished. Demand it from the SAG-AFTRA, that's the Twitter account, and do not accept any AMPTP proposal that does not have it. That is their current negotiation with the AMPTP. Semi-retired derivatives trader GainZ222 tweeted some toxic behavior from Adam Tate. GainZ says, and I will read just the beginning, not saying he launched the coin, but Taint knows, not Taint, Tate, knows the viral implications of his tweets, and he even cash tagged the ticker, i.e. he wouldn't use, wouldn't use the ticker if you paid him 500000 but he just tweeted this one free. Looks like someone's trying to cash in on a meme season, in it? Continuing on. On Tuesday, developer VY Demo. Vidamo, wrote a thread cautioning everybody about the unprofessional and abusive behavior of a certain meme coin creator. Here's the beginning regarding ETH Ben. I was the developer of at ETH Ben, first PSYOP contract. I have never worked with someone more unprofessional or deranged, and due to this, I left the team before payment. I have Credible evidence that Ben does not intend for this to be a fair launch or even project. The following day, blockchain sleuth Amir Ormu outed crypto influencer BitBoy for having quickly dumped tokens that he promised that he wouldn't. Here's our Amir's comment. BitBoy, BitBoy sold all of his Ben tokens that he committed to not selling them for six months. Here's BitBoy's address, which he which uh, he doxed it by himself. And then Ben BitBoy's response from what he originally said. I am committed not to selling any Ben coins for six months. I'm still intentionally not locking those coins. Why? To piss off the haters who say I'm a grifter, scammer, dishonest, and a P and D or bum and never. Going to make them look dumb again. I'm sorry, but I think that's what you did to yourself. Lawyers are getting blockchain savvy now, according to a Thursday tweet by blockchain sleuth Zach XBT. And here is his relatively short tweet. Wow, both pump and dump meme coins, uh, Nyan meme coin and Grumpy Cat meme coin, were just sent cease and desist letters on chain. Ooh. 
For at least one NFT tr T trader this week, the decision to use bots was an expensive mistake. Here's NFTstatistics.eth or Punk9059. Wow. So the 1.3 ETH bids were someone's bot uh, at Han Wencheng. Han Wencheng noticed it and said, I'm going to trick him and then dump all my NFTs to him. His bot just broke. Tricked the bot, bought NFTs at 0.95 and sold them at 1.3 ETH. Bot owner lost $200,000. Oh, is this online PvP? <laughs> Bitcoin Maxi Alex Kruger was bullish on AI on Thursday. Here's Alex tweet. The AI bubble is just getting started. Wait for your family to pitch you the AI stocks during Thanksgiving and for the tax driver to tell you how he is harnessing ChatGPT to trade stocks and shitcoins. Republican and crypto-friendly lawmaker Tom Emmer tweeted about a new bill he introduced on Thursday that appears to do some of Gary Gensler's work for him. I'll read the second tweet. The Securities Clarity Act inserts a key term, the, quote, investment contract asset, end quote, into existing securities law to enable crypto projects to reach their full potential in a compliant way, allowing the United States to completely, to complete globally, pardon me, compete globally, in this next iteration of the internet. And finally, in real life, counterparts to the pudgy penguins NFT craze have been selling like hotcakes, which we will talk about later. And Spencer, SDSN1, says, wow, Luca Nets just said in the first two days that pudgy penguins sold over half a million dollars in pudgy penguins on a Amazon. And we will talk about that in a later article. Back to you, John. Yep. All right. So that's a wrap on that. Let's move over to this week in coins. SSC and CBDC news drives XRP rally during slow slow week. The price of Bitcoin and Ethereum remained flat for the third week running as the United States Security and, and Exchange Commission, SSC, showed no signs of conceding ground over its claim to being the industry's lead regulator. Bitcoin added a modest 0.3% to its value over the last seven days, and currently trades at $27,110.29. Likewise, Ethereum only grew 0.6% and currently trades hand at a, a, about $1,800. These were no substantial losses among any of the top 30 cryptocurrencies this week. Three projects posted notable rallies. XRP blew up 9.4% and entered the week at $0.46. Cents. Really? That's what XRP is at right now? $0.46? Cents? That's crazy. Yeah. The coins uh, progenitor, Ripple... Uh, scored a small courtroom victory against SSC in the latter's ongoing lawsuit against the companies against the company for selling XRP as unregistered security. On Tuesday, Judge An Annalisa Torres blocked the SEC's motion to seal documents linked to a speech by former SEC Director Bill Hill, uh, Hinman explaining why Bitcoin and Ethereum should not be considered securities. Towards said the documents in question were subject to the strong presumption of public access. Ripple's defense previously made Hinman's case for XRP, but the SEC countered that Hinman's speech represented Hinman's personal views before, uh, before unsuccessfully requesting the motion to seal the documents. Hinsman's, 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 and Hinsman's. And a little <laughs> bit of Hinsman's and Hinsman's. Jeez. Ripple made headlines again on Thursday with the news that it had launched its central bank digital currency, CBDC, platform. The platform is pitched to central banks and governments looking to create their own centrally issued stablecoin alongside financial institutions that will distribute them and the users, both retail and corporate, that will trade, hold, and use them. Another big mover was Litecoin, which... This week blew up 13.2% and trades for $91.29 at the time of writing. The Litecoin network recently increased in popularity as a result of Ordinal's inscription, a craze that brings NFT-style assets to the blockchain with unsophisticated smart contracts like Bitcoin and Litecoin. Ethereum staking token Lido DAO surged 13.7% this week, sustaining its momentum from last week. SSC ready to help. <laughs> sure I need the sound effects for that. I need a sound. <laughs> throw me a sound effects. Throw me a sound effects. Don't have uh, it. Let's see. Dun dun dun. <laughs> I don't know if that's that's right, but okay. <laughs> okay how, how about how about how about? Uh... 
On Monday, SEC Chair Gary Gensler pushed back against claims that the SEC's regulatory guidance to crypto companies was not clear. Speaking as a keynote session, Gensler insisted the rules have already been published and added his agency stands ready to help them to come into compliance. The SEC's position is widely perceived as disingenuous because the regulator is simultaneously bombarding the industry with lawsuits. Even one of the SEC's own commissioners, Hester Pierce, has dis dissented a couple of times due to the lack of clarity, most recently over her agency's decision to shut down Kraken's staking platform and its proposal to amend the definition of exchange to bring crypto companies into its jurisdiction. Yeah, they're trying to make crypto into um, fiat, and that's just not going to work. <laughs> Another noteworthy event on Monday was the SEC's response to Coinbase's petition for a writ, writ, writ of what? A writ, what, 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 what? Writ of mand, mand, mandamus? Writ yeah, that's what mandamus. I was trying to say earlier. <laughs> mandamus was the word I was tripping on as well. Writ of mandamus. In order that would require the agency to clarify its rule on crypto regulations, the regulator's lawsuit urged the court to dismiss Coinbase's request. All right, now let's move on around the world. In the South Korean press on Monday, Samsung announced its partnership with Bank of Korea to, joint, to jointly conduct research amid, a, um, aimed at developing an ecosystem for a CBDC. Both parties signed a memorandum of understanding research into offline CBDC payments, according to a Korean Herald report. Samsung previously participated in a, a BOK's CBDC pilot project last year, developing offline CBDC technology to enable transfer and payment through near-field communication, NFC, even when transaction senders and recipients de uh, recip re recipient devices were not connected to the internet. <coughs> On Tuesday, European Union financial minister adopts the bloc's market uh, in crypto assets, a MICA, bill with no objections. <clears throat> this marks the final step in the process of the legislation coming into force and now means that the EU has a comprehensive and uniform set of guidelines for regulating crypto throughout its 27 member states. Finally, on Wednesday, a cross-party committee of British MPs on Wednesday published a report recommending that British governments legislate crypto as gambling. The bizarre proposal envisions handling oversight of the Gambling Commission and includes possible taxes to support addiction and debt advice. <laughs> and then, there, crypto knots is your week in coins. Yeah, it's kind of disappointing with it. They're like, oh, it's gambling. It's like, uh... No. <laughs> that's all I get you, man. But I mean, that's, you that's could look at the same true. thing as saying stocks is gambling, but it's not mm -hmm. called gambling, so it's like, mm. <clears throat> wah, wah, wah. They want to regulate everything so that they can feel <laughs> safe. And they don't seem to understand that that's not what it's about. Yes. We're getting around regulation. That's the point of crypto. Crypto circumvents regulation. If you try to regulate it, it's not crypto anymore. So, next news. <coughs> no, MetaMask will not withhold your crypt uh, crypto for taxes. Legal terminology can be complex, the company admitted, but called the claim false and inaccurate. So, Consensus, the makers of the popular Meta MetaMask browser-based crypto wallet, called out tweets circulating with inaccurate information about Consensus Terms of Service, asserting for the record that MetaMask does not collect taxes on crypto transactions, and we do not have... We have not made any changes to our terms to do so. So be sp specific on this, <clears throat> along with the level of, of um, interaction that people are obviously ready for, at least with, for the last comment in This Week in Coins. Um, it's not that you can't get your information. It, you certainly can volunteer your public keys up to certain services that will calculate the taxes that we get. But MetaMask being an open source and, you know, a blockchain based service, although it is centralized, um, <clears throat> isn't a service that you currently pay for, to my knowledge. And as such, why would they be holding to the idea of holding your crypto? I mean, there's or rather holding your crypto for the sake of taxes. It, 
you, there's so many different tax laws. How would MetaMask even begin to do that? So um, I'm not saying it's impossible, but they're an international company that is, as I said just previously, circumventing traditional finance and traditional money. <laughs> uh, you need to figure out your own taxes is basically what they're saying is this is not for us to do. It's for you to do. It's your money, right? We don't hold your money. I mean, you, we hold access to your wallet. You know, what's interesting about this, and people may not realize this, is all the, um, uh, what's it called, addresses that you're using in MetaMask, it's just a way of accessing your data. It's not a, it doesn't actually store your data in MetaMask. You can literally take the exact same keys that you have on, on mm -hmm. MetaMask and move them to Trust or to Ledger, if you want to, um, or to Atomic Wallet, or to any place that will support the same uh, chains. MetaMask is just a viewing and transactional inter interface. That's one of the things that's neat about it in general, is that your money is on the blockchain. It's not in MetaMask. <laughs> so, <clears throat> I mean, this may be a new concept, as it is a new concept, so it's, if it's not as obvious to people as to what's really going on here. The old way is that you store your actual money. You literally give the keys to your money over to a centralized institution like a bank or a, at least in the United States, a federal uh, credit union. Um, in, in blockchain, for the most part, you're hand, you're, you, you hold your keys and you do with your keys and your coin as you will. MetaBask is just providing an interface to it. That's all they're doing. And yep. some way of you know interacting with various websites. Make, making it, I mean, If you didn't use yeah, MetaMask, it might be a little more complicated for you. You'd actually have to write your own interface. MetaMask has written their, in their, in their, pardon me, an interface for you to use. So <clears throat> they're not yeah, going to hold so your taxes. <laughs> So this whole update that came out last week, this uh, terms and agreement was 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 published last week from MetaMask. Um, if you have a MetaMask, you obviously notice that you you have this new update, this terms and agreement. Yep. So uh, this this is what popped up, the 4.3, saying that uh, MetaMask says we reserve the right to withhold taxes where where required. Now that's easy to do when it's uh, uh, KYC and AML, and pretty much there's a lot of services out there that. Uh, that require a, uh, AML KYC. Yep. Centralized entities. Obviously, there's there's a lot out there, and I would I would actually conclude that the majority of users using MetaMask use these type of services, and so when you have a when you have a government that has a really sophisticated uh, uh, um, data tracing uh, technology where they can trace back these addresses to the uh, users. Mm -hmm. And they've had this, and, and I was listening to a podcast uh, uh, um, a couple of days ago saying that this technology has been out since 2015. Mm -hmm. They literally can trace every single address on the blockchain without a struggle, you know. And so since then, obviously, it's been more sophisticated. It's getting more advanced. And so, yeah, it, does, it wouldn't surprise me if, if MetaMask uh, just kind of has to, you know, bow down or bend over for the government, for Uncle Gary, and uh, just do it, just do what they're, they're told to do. Right. So it's one of those things that uh, be careful with uh, with with your with your uh, your funds, especially if you're making a lot of crypto, man. <clears throat> and that's just how it is with all with all um, all these mirroring services like MetaMask. You know, yep. it's gonna be MetaMask, Atomic Wallet, Trust Wallet, um, uh, Zellcore Wallet. These are all these are all private companies that uh, that provide a service to to the to the customer, which is us. Mm -hmm. you know? Yes, there are private keys. Yes, you can take your private keys and go somewhere else. But there's a point in there that if they if they lock those 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 keys there, you know that's where it gets a little a little worrisome. Exactly. If you're if you're as they say, not your keys, not your crypto. Uh, now, of course, they're holding onto your keys for you in in the sense of whatever government wants you to behave that way. Maybe you need a VPN <laughs> or a Tor network for that matter. Yeah. Not hmm. only that, I think uh, just just hosting your own core, your own node. Um, it's probably the best, healthiest thing to do. Yep. Yeah. If you can, if you can do it. Now with it, with Ethereum, it's a little tricky because it's a gargantuan. 
Um, but the nice thing is, at least to some degree, particularly with a QD node, um, you don't have to hold the entire chain necessarily. You just have to hold like the last two, two to four weeks worth of the chain. So you don't have to have a hard, a what, 20 terabyte hard drive or 20 terabytes worth, worth of storage in order to store the entire Ethereum chain um, just to use your coin. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Anyways, continuing on. Pudgy penguins! Yay! Budgie Penguins Smash Amazon debuted. Sells over twenty thousand toys. Yeah, it's amazing. It's yep. uh, it's really quite interesting. This this fidgetal toy, fidgetal meaning digital physical combination collection. Literally, as we said in the end of the this week in crypto Twitter, uh, half a million dollars in two days, beating out <laughs> beating out a whole bunch of other uh, e commerce. Uh, sellers in particular, I, I don't remember who it was exactly. Um, I think they even beat out Disney as far as the total amount of dollars spent. Yeah, on it was written in the things. article there down down below. Let's see, what, what was it? Yeah, here we go. It's beating out legacy brands like Disney, Transformers, Pokemon, Barbie, and Legos. Yeah, <laughs> it's forty eight hours. Crazy, man. Half a million That's dollars crazy. in forty eight hours. That is it's very <laughs> impressive. So yeah, um, it's it's I don't I don't know how to put it exactly. I am obviously in favor of this, and obviously it's very fun, but it's kind of a neat concept that that the pudgy penguins are really kind of bucking the trend against uh, the NFT crash, uh, which you know so many people lost so much money on their their non physical NFTs. But as John and I are both in favor of physical NFTs, it's kind of neat to see across the board that this very simple plastic toys making a comeback because it is as they say fidgetal physically digital so oh. you know what i want to see i want to see a phys uh, what you call a fidgetal a fidgetal nft of a chunkla you know <laughs> the chunkla bro we got to bring the chunkla on okay okay all right all right so Ledger that's Penguins. simple news. Let's move on here to uh, so much anger, so much hate. Uh, says Ledger co-founder amid botched recover service launch. Okay, so we've been talking about this quite a bit here, but unfortunately, the uh, 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 what's his name, uh, Eric uh, Lavervet. La La I can't pronounce his last French name. Um, what a horrible mess! He says, <laughs> co-founder of Ledger. Um, I'm devastated to come on the subreddit that I created nine years ago to see the images of Ledger devices burning insults and a lot of anger. I'm honestly on the verge of tears, he said. And uh, I get it. I mean, I can feel a little bit of passion for the man who created this concept over almost a decade ago. Um, but uh, his problem is letting the cat out of the batter. In this, in this case, uh, with with otherwise known as the Streisand effect. And that is uh, trying to divert so much information away from something he did not and didn't should not have done, which was basically put in a back door to his um, supposedly secure device and giving it an option to, you know, an opt-in uh, subscription service costing 10 bucks a month. I get the reason for doing it. That is, he wants to make it secure for modern day, which is, of course, the problem we're running into with all these people who are apparently incapable of uh, securely storing their keys. Um, I get it. You might just you know, write it down. But it's like if you were to store a quarter million dollars anywhere, wouldn't you want to know that there was a, back, a way of backing up that data definitively? <laughs> That's, I mean, maybe it's not a quarter million. Maybe it's just 10000 But um, if it's a lot of money to you, you should probably be really wary about where you put the keys, right? <laughs> mm -hmm. And, of course, the intent with the Ledger Recover is to make it so that just in case you do something stupid, um, you can recover your keys. Fine. I get that. I get the reasoning. But for those who are at least aware, and plenty of them are, people who have been in crypto for as long as John has, um, you know, crypto itself has been around for 14 years, um, for those who are ready for that responsibility and are adult enough to handle it, don't want a backdoor, even if it's just an option. The fact is you made a backdoor 
And now everyone else's hardware is less secure, if not completely insecure, because now there is a backdoor, and that's what and people that's, are hating. And that's exactly, and that's where all the retaliation is coming from, from the community. The, anybody that's holding a ledger right now is destroying it. They're burning it. They're talking so much trash. They're, 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 they, 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 there's so much hatred right now with, with ledger right now. It's so bad. Yep. You know, it's to the point that uh, this is pretty much going to be the, 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 the sound effect. This is the death knell. This is Sparta! Goodbye, Ledger. Goodbye. Yes, this is the death of, of Ledger, unfortunately, due to bad planning and, and just not seeing the, not seeing the, tree, uh, the forest for the trees. Uh, it's, it's sad, honestly, because Ledger was a really cool tool. And they poked a hole in the back of it and said, oh, well, you know, if you pay, you get secure access. But if you don't pay, your it's, access it's, is it's, still it's, insecure. It's, one of the, it's, it's, it's another thing like it's, it's pretty much what what's going on with with MetaMask, with this whole thing where they're 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 supposedly going to start making people uh, uh, they're going to start withholding these taxes. You know, if they can, uh, there's going to be a KYC AML on there somewhere. They're going to be able to data trace. Uh, the users there, even though they claim that uh, they're they're not able to trace people's people's identification back, they can. It can. Yeah. It's it's not that difficult. Uh, the same thing with uh, with the ledger. In order to opt into this service, you have to KYC AML on there. Okay. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's, that's not that's not cool. It's not cool. right. That is the problem here, and so it's just, it's just yeah. I don't know if I can say it another way. It's it's it's, it's sad, and we're gonna have to find another hardware wallet. And people who paid for these things are really pissed. You know, they were using it for a long time and they thought they were secured. Now they're not. Well, no, well, there's always alternatives out there. You know, so try yeah, no, there are alternatives. Sure. But, I mean, can you get your money back on something you spent on no, this thing? No. no. But, uh, I mean, if, if, you've, if you have, let's just say, ho hopefully people have their ledger long enough that uh, it, it's paid and that's for itself, yeah, it probably it yeah. probably has paid for itself, and it, it depends. Hopefully. If you just got yours, then you're screwed. But <laughs> yeah, just use it until until you get hacked. I don't know. Yeah, there anyway, you go. Use it until there, you get hacked, right? Yeah. Uh, there's always alternatives. Like now, you can actually get a Game Boy. You can you can use a Game Boy to uh, turn it into a hardware wallet. So if you're interested in that, that's our next article here. Yeah, saying, let's just go uh, to that. Old Game Boy. <laughs> huh? Your let's old just... Game Boy can now be turned into a Bitcoin and an Ethereum hardware wallet. Yep. Do you want to take this one? Yeah, no, go ahead. Uh, so craving, uh, <laughs> let's see, um, craving both 90s nostalgia, the ice cold crypto storage. A small team of developers uh, at crypto startup Keep uh, is revamping original Nintendo Game Boy handhelds consoles and optimizing to store cryptocurrencies offline, transforming a popular handheld. I, I, it was popular back then. Now, in present time, I have not seen anybody have. Uh, 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 a Game Boy, like that, just doesn't go around. There's you know? Game Boy DS, right? <laughs> From like ten yeah, years ago. Yeah, this is the original Game Boy, and they're they're specifically building a cartridge for it. Right? No, I know. I I still have one of these because I, I was, I'm old. No, anyways. Um, <laughs> yeah, actually, it's funny because so it, we we I literally got to give it to my brother just like a year ago. I was like, hey, give this to your kid and see if he likes it. And she was just she played it, but she it's, it's this is too hard. <laughs> Game Wallet's been uh, in development since since early January. It's only been a couple months, so I would say give them some more time uh, to get your to get your your, your game wallet right. Your, it's right. going to be a little uh, a cartridge that you you plug into your um, into your Game Boy, and you can see that here if you go to the website, you can see exactly what you're going to get. This is going to be your little key, your cartridge here, and if you want to sign up, you can go on to their mailing list. Just type in your email, and there you go. And you'll know uh, you'll get an email by Keep when this particular uh, cartridge comes out. Yeah, I don't. Cool. I think the thing that's most difficult for me is is I don't know about that. Let me look on eBay real quick and just get a, a quick sense of how much a an original Game Boy goes for. Um, because the all right, yeah, it's hundred hundred bucks, which is about what it costs brand new. Um, I'm not. <sighs> I'm not super thrilled about that because it's like if you have an original, you probably have it wrapped up and you aren't playing it anymore just because it's such a valuable, you know, toy. Um, you know, it's a classic. Who, who's going to use it? Maybe the guy that created this is like, hey, this would be kind of cool. You know, <laughs> I 
That's what like, I'm saying is that you don't see those too often. Now, what you do see is a Switch, the Nintendo Switch. People have those. They're everywhere. Yep, Everybody has yep. them all around. You know. Yep. Yeah, yeah, if you make a cartridge for that, those things do, they do take cartridges, right? I'm pretty I sure mean, they do. I would think that, you know, there were a lot more Game Boy Advance sold than there were Game Boy Originals. I think they could go with the game, or the, D, or the dual screen, or the DS. They, just lots of people play with those things as well. I, almost any of the other version of Game Boys, if, if you could make an adapter to fit for those newer versions, might be worthwhile. But in my opinion, the original just doesn't seem to make sense. Exactly. So... I don't know, maybe it's just a unique thing. Like, hey, look what we made. Uh, I guess. You know. Well, I mean, like, like, like it says here in the article on the bottom, it says, uh, mm, what, started, what started as a fun idea now seems to be a really important product, uh, Mumbarts added. Trusting the supply chain for, for new security devices can be scary, but uh, because we don't know who has messed with the device, but I know exactly where the Game Boy on my shelf has been for the last 20 years. Uh, yeah, <laughs> for the last 20 years. How about the last 40 almost? Uh, but, yeah, I know where mine was. It was in my mom's closet, and she finally cleaned it out and gave it to us. So it's like, uh, I guess. <laughs> but, sounds too complicated. I don't want to deal with it. Right, um, just use a Raspberry Pi. They're cheaper. <laughs> yep. Bing! Even 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 a pi a pi zero, yeah, right? yeah. You could yeah. I totally use a pi zero. You don't you don't really need much. Pi zero with a memory card. You can yep. easily do that. Yep. You can totally do that. So yeah. And and pi zeros are really cheap. You can get them for what ten bucks. So yep. um, even the Wi Fi version. Change, yeah. So or, or Pico Pi or something. You might be able to do it with a Pico Pi. But yeah, the point is, uh, he's just he's, it's just a fun idea, right? That's that's what I was getting at. Is anyways. It's that's cool. A, I like it. It's it's freaking cool. But it's not, uh, it's not like real use case. You know, you exactly. Know, really see people walking around with their Game Boy in their pocket. Exactly. Um. <laughs> <laughs> Alrighty. Well, that's all we got for this show. Thank you all for coming out and watching. Check out our coin tree, and you can see uh, the current places you can donate. We appreciate that. You can also, of course, transfer in, in Lightning if you like. We appreciate that as well. You can check out our content out on YouTube, Odyssey, Twitch, Spotify podcast. That will be the audio version, not the video version. So, or no, are we doing we're doing the video version on Spotify podcast now, aren't we? Um, yeah. So you can also donate to Patreon, and in particular with Patreon, if you want to catch up all the extra content we got from the Blockchain Expo, you can check it out all on Patreon. But you will have to upgrade your plan to at least the fifteen dollar per month, which we of course appreciate. Uh, Twitter, Discord, where you can get your C three media tokens, uh, and you can support us in other ways. Thanks all for coming out and listening. We appreciate your time. You can give us a thumbs up if you like Thank and subscribe. Thank you for your patronage. <laughs> yes. Uh, subscribe if you will, and we appreciate you all. So, if that said, stack stats and hodl. Stats and hodl. Adios. Adios.